Welcome to the show. Thanks for coming on. How are you, man? Lovely. Thanks for the invitation. Very happy to join you both. Okay. So for anyone who doesn't know you, uh, how would you describe exactly what it is you do? Oh, now that's a good question. Yeah, so I am an immunologist in Trinity College, Dublin. So I'm a scientist and I work in the immune system. And I also have what's called the chair of biochemistry. I'm sitting in the chair of biochemistry as we speak. So I've, got, I've got, kind of got two titles. So immunology, right? The immune system. Yeah. We like to think we've got a good immune system because we're from the country and we grew up like yeah. playing in dirt and, and shit and climbing trees and stuff. Um, yeah. So do you think there's nothing to that nowadays? Like young lads been wrapped in cotton wool. There is. There is for definite. They call this the hygiene hypothesis. There, there's a posh name. If you're too hygienic and too clean, especially in childhood, your immune system can't learn good from bad, you know? And then when you get older, you might get immune disease like allergies and asthma and stuff. There's very good studies. If you grow up on a farm, even if you spend like a few months in China on a farm, that can protect you against getting asthma later in life. And we think it's because a bit of dirt is good for you, basically, you know. Mm -hmm. And if you inhale a bit of dirt or pick up dirt in the, around, and, and not just farms, in the countryside, that can, that can teach your immune system to, to behave itself, if you like. Because asthma is where the immune system is out of control. And you become allergic to something, you know. So there's no doubt a bit of dirt. A bit of dirt is definitely good for you. So I, I've got asthma. Are you saying that, like, my parents, I was too clean as a child? They were too clean. Yeah, exactly. Yes, wow. yes, yes. Well, I've tried, in, I've tried in adulthood <laughs> to reverse the process by, by being yeah. stink. But it's not working it for me. It could be too late. It could be too late. <laughs> it could be too late. Um, yeah, yeah. What are your, what's your stance on people taking multivitamin tablets and that kind of thing to, for their immune system? Because I've hear, I'm hearing that like... Oh, my mam constantly rings me and says like, you, every time around this, this time of the year, she rings me and says like, you need to be on a tonic. Which I guess yeah. is like, you know, an old school, a new version is called a multivitamin, ma'am. You know, they have them in capsule yeah, form. Yeah, that's right. It's like, does, does that really work and should everyone be on them? Only if you're malnourished. I mean, if you've got a normal diet, a normal balanced diet, you get all the nutrients you need from that really, you know. If you're malnourished, you might want to take a supplement. Older people, actually, are less able to absorb vitamins in their diet. So therefore, you might give them a supplement. Vitamin D is a really important one, actually, for example, you know. Multivitamins, I mean, that that's interesting, but only only if you're not able to get a proper balanced diet would be the general view on that one. Yeah, but if, if you're eating, like, you know, goujons and tatoes all day, you might need a multivitamin, no? You might, yeah. You're, a balanced diet, the dreaded balanced diet. you got to eat, eat as healthily as you can. But did you know, Johnny, the potato is a great, a great source of all the vitamins and minerals, oh, sure. potatoes. Of course, man. In fact, potatoes is almost a complete food. You could, eat, you could live off potatoes and milk, as we did in Ireland back in the 1800s to some extent. Um, but no, as long as you get a good, if, you, if you're living off uh, junk food, you will, you will become deficient in certain nutrients and then you might need a supplement or go out and have a balanced meal. We'll, we'll do the trick just as well. Man, that's why we were fucked with the famine, the spuds, you know what I mean? The complete food. Yeah, it's true. I've heard people saying that vitamin D and vitamin B is good to help you fight COVID. Have you heard this? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, it's a bit controversial that certainly vitamin D, your immune system needs vitamin D for definite. But there's a special cell type in your immune system called the macrophage, which we work on in my lab, actually. Macrophages eat the virus and they eliminate it. They need vitamin D. It kind of supercharge them. No vitamin D, you might be less able to fight the virus, especially again if you're over 60, say, because older people can't make it. We make our own vitamin D, by the way, from the sun in our skin. When you get older, your skin's a bit thinner, and in the winter, you may get deficient in vitamin D, so it's wise maybe to take a, a supplement in that situation. You know, like you said there, the sunlight and stuff, we can we can get our vitamin D hit from that. What about sunbeds? Sunbeds, yes, that's a different type of UV light. Yeah, I'm just asking for a friend. You're, you're obviously a scientist, Johnny. Very, that's a very impressive question. I'm very impressed by that. I don't know, Mick. <laughs> <laughs> as far as I know, that's UVB, I think it's called. But that doesn't make the vitamin D. Nat your best friend is natural sunlight. When the sun is out, get outdoors, even in winter, even if it's weak, you know. Okay. The more sunlight you can get, the better. It's the, it's the best thing to, to go for the vitamin D. Okay. Well, have you any other top tips for people to stop them getting sick around this time of year? I do. I do. That's very important. Yeah. Well, I remember that, I mean, even though COVID is such a horrible thing that we're all sick of and, 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 and there's many uncertainties, you can help your immune system, actually, in all kinds of ways. A good night's sleep is very important, as it is for most things. Because if you have a bad night's sleep, the next day, there's studies showing your immune system is a third less effective. Isn't that incredible? Wow. The one bad night's sleep. So a good night, the next night you get a good night's sleep, you're all right. So a good night's sleep. Secondly, uh, don't be getting stressed. 
because stress is a major negative on the immune system. Your body makes a hormone called cortisol, and that suppresses the immune system. And again, we know this when you're stressed, you're more prone to coughs and colds and so on. And so therefore, try and avoid stress. A great way to avoid stress is exercise, of course. And, and the immune system loves exercise because your blood churns around your body. Increase your heart rate. More and more blood is flowing. The immune system like it loves the blood churning because it's in your blood anyway. And that gets the immune system going as well. And it's a de-stressor. So, so there, there's some simple things people can do to maintain a healthy immune system. But your knees hate exercise. Yeah, my, <laughs> my, my knees don't do exercise. One of, the, one of the questions I had, Luke, is... So, like, I, I've been on many stags, and now, you know, COVID, we, we seem to be getting through COVID, so kind of stags and stuff like that are coming back, stags and hens, the whole lot. But any time I've ever been on a stag, I've always picked up, whether it's a chest infection. Chest in, no, 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 no. <laughs> no. A, a chest infection or, a, you know, a head cold or the flu, I've always picked up a bug yeah. afterwards. Is that from alcohol or what is that actually from? Yeah, that's the negative. I mean, alcohol is a negative because... Alcohol in your bloodstream kills off the immune cells. Ah. So therefore, you're going to get more prone. It also makes your gut a bit leaky, actually, the alcohol in your gut. And that can damage the immune system in various ways as well. So so more than likely, it's uh, the binge. As ever, we're not allowed binge, are we? Binging can damage your immune system. And then secondly, you're probably in close quarters with your, your buddies, you see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And one of them is infecting you. You know what I mean? So you're indoors probably at a pub or something and then you might pick up an infection from them. So it's a combination of being exposed, obviously enough. Okay. Uh, you got to get exposed to the damn thing in the first place and a slightly immunodeficient state maybe. And maybe a bad night's sleep. I bet you don't sleep much in a stack. No, so very little. You're, you're, very you're, little. You're getting a triple whammy there. Sleeping's you know? cheating, Luke. <laughs> yes. Oh yes, there we have it. <laughs> I think I'm the opposite in that if I was feeling a bit sick and then we went on a right session... When I wake up the next day, I feel it's like I've turned the computer off and on again. <laughs> reset uh, yeah. I feel like I've completely reset my body. It's like I've put enough alcohol through it. The good bacteria, yeah. the bad bacteria, everything's gone. Yeah. And we're starting in with a blank canvas on Monday. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Um, we must do a scientific study of that and find out <laughs> that's true because I don't, it seems unlikely. Well, we're wondering, seeing as you're such a good scientist, how come you've never come up with a hangover cure? Yes, well, I'd love one myself, lads, I'll tell you that much, because I am prone to the occasional tipple here and there. Well, do the crime, do the time. There's the truth of it. You can't do much about the hangover, let's face it, you know. Um, and, and people have investigated this for years. You've got to have some sort of science tip for us here now. Like, there's no way you're waking up Sunday morning dying like the rest of us. You've got to be like, oh, everyone else is dying. But here, I've got a bag of science going to cure myself, no? <laughs> um, sadly not. No, sadly not. But I will give you some tips. Yeah. Though. Yeah. Hydration is very important. The symptoms of the hangover. Now, by the way, the medical term for hangover is visalgia. There's a new word, <laughs> visalgia. That's the medical term. So wait, right? you could ring your, doc, your your boss and be like, I can't come into work today. I'm suffering from visalgia. Is it? Visalgia. Yeah, yeah exactly. That, you, that's what it's called. It's called visalgia. There you have it. Yeah, it sounds great, doesn't it? Um, but hydration, you see, you get dehydrated because your body is breaking down the alcohol and it uses water to break down alcohol. So your water levels fall, and that actually shrinks your brain a bit. Jeez. And that's the headache. The headache is caused by dehydration, for example. Okay. You know? And then, so in other words, t drink loads of water. It's well known, isn't it? Let's face it. So lots of water is a good thing. Um, the second thing is, interestingly, a full Irish isn't bad because the fatty food and something called cysteine in the eggs helps you detoxify, right? Wow. The enzymes are trying to break down the toxins because you're making all these toxins from the alcohol. Eggs help you detoxify and that will speed up your recovery. So there's another tip. Eat lots of eggs. Uh, that can be good as well. And then thirdly, it's okay to take paracetamol to give you a bit of pain relief. You know. So, so there's, but the main thing is just rest and take it easy because then your body can get over this uh, poison that you put into your body. You know, hey, I, easy I poison myself regularly. <laughs> but, uh, you, so yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to say we shouldn't be doing it. But, um, but certainly these things help, help you detoxify. Man, that's I'm, I'm, I'm mind blown. I, I have like lo loads of science stuff now to like mid bust is like, you know, act actamels. They say that what 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 exactly do they do? I've always wondered this, right? Because no, it says yeah. LKZI immunitas. The fuck is that? Yeah, yeah. That's, to that's to make you buy it. Yeah. I think yeah. that's the first reason it's called that. <laughs> Although there is something in it. There is something in it. That's all about the, the bacteria in your gut. And we know that the bacteria in your gut are very important. 
They help you digest food. They seem to regulate your body in various ways. And in Actimel, they've got good bacteria. So all these yogurts, okay, they've got what are called probiotics, which is good bacteria, and they might help you then. And you, you drink the yogurt, and the bacteria is in your gut now, and it, it rebalances things, you know. And there's a bit of evidence for that. It's a very active area of research. It's called the microbiome. That's the name of all the, all the bacteria in your gut. It's called the microbiome. And there's lots of places investigating the importance of the microbiome. So, so th those drinks, they, they, yeah, they may bring some benefits is the idea. Okay. Yeah. Can we bust some more? Yeah, bust some more there. Okay. Um, pregnant women drinking boiled Guinness. <laughs> Have you heard this? That's new to me. Yeah. Really? <laughs> I haven't heard of that one before. That's <laughs> I know lo loads of people who did that now. I've never heard of that. A, no, bo even a bottle of Guinness, boil it, let yeah. it cool down and then let it off. A pre yeah. pre I don't know. It's probably for the iron, is it? Or? The trouble with that is uh, it's got alcohol, you see, which can damage things. And so it's probably not recommended, sadly, to take a drink like that. Although there are guidelines on this. I think if you're in the third trimester, a glass of wine is OK because the baby's nearly fully developed, you know. But in general terms, alcohol and pregnancy is not recommended. But would you not? Just in case you think I'm going to say go on a bender <laughs> yeah. when you're pregnant. You, that's not the case. Would you not be boiling the alcohol out of it? Well, maybe that's it. If you boil it up, that's like, oh, that's a good point. Oh, now we're talking. Yeah. But it must taste It must taste horrible. I would uh, I would imagine so, yeah. <laughs> I, I never got a bad Guinness in my life. Oh, it has um, to be chilled. <laughs> yeah, okay, fair enough. What about... So, right, Johnny, the al alcohol boils off at 78 degrees, you see. Whereas water is 100. So you, you could get rid of some of the alcohol by heating up uh, the Guinness. Yeah, that, that may be a good thing. Well, What about hot whiskeys to cure a cold slash anything? No, sadly, there's not much evidence for that. <laughs> uh, it'll, it'll, feel you, it'll make you feel slightly better, you know. It'll give you symptomatic relief. And what's wrong with the bit of symptomatic relief? So it's okay for that. But there's no magic ingredient in, in, in the hot whiskey, not even in the cloves of the lemon, really. That will, that's beneficial, we don't think. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to disagree with you. <laughs> We're going to have to agree to disagree on that one. Uh, Luke, can I ask you, like, as, as part of Science Week and uh, creating our future initiative, we asked like listeners of our podcast and stuff to send us in things that they'd like to see researched. And yeah. one of them was like, will we ever be able to like, you know, have some sort of a, a supplement that we can take that allows us to just eat what we want? In in in, yeah. in other terms, maintain weight. That's that was the big one we found from our listeners. Is there any like science? Can you tell us something sciencey that's fat like burning. basically fat burning? Yeah, is there anything like that's a great one. Yeah. yeah, we're very interested in getting these questions. By the way, and, and as you probably know, as the whole idea is, anybody in Ireland, yeah, can send the ideas in, isn't it brilliant? Yeah. And they're hoping to get 10, 20,000 ideas. Now, some might be great. Some might be cracked. Who cares? Get them all in. Oh, we got, Let's have a look at them. We got some feedback um, last week, I'll tell you. <laughs> I don't know how much of a difference <laughs> they're going to make, but people are curious. <laughs> um, yeah, the question you're asking, in other words, can you have your cake and eat it, you're wondering? Yeah. Because you can, you can take some supplement and then have your diet. It's unlikely, but it's a very important area of research, actually, because obesity is an epidemic. It's very damaging to people's health in all kinds of ways, you know. And some people are obese for genetic reasons. It's, they've got the wrong genes, you see, and they're, they're hormonally sort of putting on weight in various ways. So it's quite a, quite a serious thing. But people are investigating, um, I guess you might put it, can you regulate appetite in some way and, and decrease appetite? Mm. That might be a useful thing if some people can, can control their appetite maybe with, with a pharmaceutical. But yet again, your, your best friend is natural things like exercise and and diet and so on, you know, that's the best way to regulate yeah, no, 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 people know that. <laughs> <laughs> they do, they do, and they won't do, they won't it, do really. it. That's, that's it, right. It's shortcuts we want, Luke. Yeah. I've got another one here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Laughter is good for your immune system. True or false? Some. Laughter, yeah. oh, absolutely. Laughter is the best medicine, guys, as you both know. Oh, yeah. And there's huge evidence for that. I mean, it, there was a great study done about five years ago when they got a bunch of women to watch a funny movie, right? It was when Harry Met Sally, actually, was the one. That right, okay. And they measured their immune system after the movie, and guess what? It was three times stronger after wow. the movie. Wow. And they, the control, and, and science, we need controls, we call these. They watched a different movie, right, which wasn't funny. I won't say which one it was. Yeah. <laughs> and there was no effect on the immune system. Wow. So we knew then it was the movie that um, was responsible for this boost in the immune response after, you know, what, having a good laugh. And, of course, again, it seems to be decreasing cortisol, the stress hormone, good hormones come out. They seem to help the immune system. So there's no question laughter is a, is a wonderful thing for us all, really important. So would you prescribe the Two Johnnies podcast to people of Ireland? <laughs> Basically good for I would. <laughs> I would. Would you say that would, down I, the camera for us once, please? I, would, I prescribe the Two Johnnies <laughs> podcast. It'll cure you of all your ailments, possibly. There you go. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> 
<laughs> I've got we've got some more myth busters here. Um, what about drinking tea on a hot day? Ah, yeah. Well, now there is evidence of a hot liquid helping you sweat more. You know, so it's hot, and you want to decrease paradoxically drinking a hot thing. Now, the reason that is you get what's called vasodilation. All the blood vessels flush up to your face because you're drinking a hot drink, and now your heat dissipates. You see, so that may be that may that may be that may be a good thing to do. So you would recommend it? I would. Wow. Well, a lot of people who work in the bog were on to us about that. <laughs> yeah, very important. Very important. And uh, my grandmother used to eat a clove of garlic every day and said it was good for her. Have you heard this one? Was she a vampire? <laughs> no, no the, the grandfather was. <laughs> well, garlic has some very interesting chemicals. Uh, they're called alicins is the name of them, right? I know, yeah. And they've got anti-cancer properties. They've got what I call antioxidant properties. So there's something interesting in garlic, actually, that makes it beneficial, all right. So, so for example, it might be useful, say, for heart disease or for even, you know, decreasing the risk of cancer. You never know. So the, people are investigating these, um, these plant chemicals all the time. And garlic has some very interesting ones. Okay. We can't have you on, Luke, and not ask about COVID. I mean... You've got a new book out about COVID. And I'm wondering, how is there still a gap in the market for more COVID material? Do we not... <laughs> Does everybody, have they not heard everything there is to hear about COVID? And do we not already know what we need to know about it? Yeah, um, that's what the publisher is frightened of, to be honest. <laughs> no, the last thing you want in your Christmas stocking, isn't it? You know? um, well, we have to wait and see. It's, it's on the sh bookshelves now. It's, it's called Keep Calm and Trust the Science is the name of the book. It's my diary, though. So it's quite personal. Okay. okay. In January 2020, I saw a little, a little paragraph in a science magazine saying there's a new virus in China. Nothing to worry about, it said. Amazing. Right? That became COVID. And I, I knew, I'm going to keep a diary. And I kept quite a detailed diary all through the whole thing. And, and, and the, uh, the, the January uh, 31st entry is, I just watched a movie called The Gathering Storm because it was suddenly Whoa. erupting. You know, amazing. So it's a bit of a drama as well. But it, it's, a, it's a good historic account. It's okay. all the science as it evolved, the vaccines being discovered, you know, and then my own restrictions and all the things we went through together kind of thing, you know. Um, okay. So it's a bit, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a personal journey through COVID and research and science as well, all wrapped up. So, so maybe pe people will <laughs> will like to laugh and a few jokes as well. Just to yeah, like yeah. Try try to keep it a light here and there. As terrible and all as COVID is, do you think it's put people's like people have a greater emphasis on science now? Because like yeah. I'll be honest, yeah. I was kind of just going about my life happy. I wasn't thinking too much about that, and then all of a sudden, I'm watching programs on the science of like how they're going to find this vaccine, and I'm yeah. like. I was basically, you know, I normally support Liverpool, but for the last year and a half, I was just supporting science. Fantastic. So, like, do, do, you, That's great. Do, you, do you think, like, this is this has put science to the forefront of people's minds? Oh, it has. It has for definite. I mean, the number of emails I was getting through this is massive, you know. Uh, we know that the CAO, more kids are applying to do science degrees. So there's stuff like that going on. And my day today just talking to people almost in the street. I got my hair cut last week and the barber asked me all about antigens and what were they and antigen testing. I had a 10 minute conversation. Yeah, and antigen yeah. is a, quite a technical immunology term. We had a great conversation, you know? So things like that tell me that, that uh, people have certainly latched on to it for, for, for good reason, obviously, you know? So it's great to see that. Were people personally emailing you during COVID like for advice? They were, <laughs> they were. And at, at the I was getting 30 emails a day at one point. Wow. Now, it's mainly worries about the vaccine or questions, yeah. like uh, looking for advice, you know. But I got some hilarious ones as well, really, <laughs> really witty ones. La just before Christmas, uh, this woman sends me an email. says, Dear Luke, we've had a vote. We want you to replace the baby Jesus in the crib. <laughs> because you're the saviour of humanity. You know, it's got, it's got, it's got, it's got <laughs> You you you've been you've been the poster by COVID, Luke. I think <laughs> I have. It's great. It's great both, yeah. isn't it? And great both. How are you dealing with being recognised? Like you're famous now. I know. Yeah, it's a bit. It's a little bit unusual. I have to say, it makes life interesting. I put it that way. You know, um, it's dying down a bit now, though. I'm not on the telly as much as you haven't noticed. And when you step off the telly, they forget you. You know, so uh, so we'll begin to go down, which I won't be uh, necessarily upset about. So it hasn't been too bad. Have you got loads of famous mates now? I want to know them all. I know them all. I, I can name drop to beat the band here at this stage. You know? <laughs> I wouldn't quite call them mates, but uh, they've all interviewed me at this stage, you know, so it's interesting, that one. Yeah. Uh, are you and Tony Houlihan mates? We are, yeah. No, I've met him a few times, actually. I met, I met him um, first back last April, 12 months, you know, and then we, 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 we occasionally have the odd exchange here and there. So uh, 
I mean, again, he's such a well-known figure, isn't yeah. he, too? So we're both, we're both in the same situation at some Is he good crack? Great crack. Yeah, no, he's a very, very nice guy, very sound, I must say, you know. And then he's only got, and as we all know, he's got the country's interest at heart, hasn't he? Even yeah. People dig into him. He's got a he's tough only job. Got one mission, that's to protect people. I reckon Tony Hoolan's going to be on the next series of Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> it's, it's, it's. I've, I've been asked on Dancing with Stars. Oh, yes. Have you? Are you going to do it, Luke? No. Oh. <laughs> Why not? I've got a PhD in immunology, lads, for crying out loud. I can't be going on Dancing with Stars. Hey, I, want, much, you know. I wanted to ask you, uh, you sold your company and made a heap yes. of money. If you're, you've loads of money now, so would you not just retire? Like, what keeps you doing what you're doing? Um, that's a really good question. That I mean, why would I stop doing what I'm doing? You know, because I love it. Because you have a heap of money. <laughs> there's a lot, well, there's a lot more to do here. That that um, success we had was a great thrill, obviously, because we, we we two new drugs for Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. You know. Wow. And and the great news there is um, Roche bought us. Roche are a Swiss drug company. They've got very deep pockets. They're now beginning big trials. Now, if that works, I'll be over the freaking moon. You can imagine. You know. Now, meanwhile, we just keep going because there's a chance it won't work. More work needs to be done, so I wouldn't I wouldn't be bothered with retiring just yet. And say developing a drug for like something like you said, Alzheimer's. How long does a project like that take, and how much you know you've got trials, yeah. studies, the whole lot? Like it's obviously a massive operation. It takes a long time because the trials go on for quite a while because you've got a, you've got a, a control group given placebo, and you've got your treatment group, and it takes two or three years for the symptoms to get worse, you know. And it's a horrible disease, Alzheimer's, as we know, but it takes time. So those trials are, are longer trials than other diseases. We, we're, we're beginning our trial very soon. It'll take about two years, that trial, to see mm-hmm. if we get a signal. Oh. Uh, and we've good reason to believe it might work from all kinds of other data that we have, you know. But the real proof of the pudding is going to be in these clinical trials. But that one takes about two years. The drug might also work in a disease called COPD, a lung disease. It's also got emphysema. That trial takes three months because you can measure the lung getting better quite quickly, you know. Yeah. But the, the trials are driven in, in a way by, by uh, the nature of each disease being a bit different, you know. But isn't that the reason that some people are so sceptical about taking the COVID vaccine is because it was a particularly short yeah. trial period, to be honest, like. It was, yeah, yeah. But, and that's understandable. Uh, the reason it went fast was just people were recruited to run the trial. It was as simple as that. I mean, the analogy I was given at the time when that was being asked, it's like if you, if you get your house painted, one person will take a week. 100 people do it in an hour. That's all that this was. They, they, just, they just put people behind it, you know, and those people. And remember, that Pfizer trial was 40,000 people had to be recruited onto that trial. Huge number of people. Mm, yeah. they, they had loads of nurses to go and find those people and you know, recruit them. So it was simply a logistical thing and, and, and they, put, they put people behind it to make it go fast. All right. Well, I hope it all works out. Yeah, <laughs> let's, let's, let's hope so. Let's hope so. Yeah, we'll keep our fingers crossed.